Coming to you live from Moscon here in Portland with Harry Heyman. How are you, Harry? I'm doing great. So you are the uh, head of server engineering at Foursquare. I am. And you just got uh, uh, done doing an awesome talk. Can you tell us a little bit first before we get into that, what is, what is Foursquare? People, I'm sure, have heard of it or used it, but... Sure. A little bit more about so it. So Foursquare is a location-based social network. Basically, you can add your add all your friends just like you would on on something like just like you would on Facebook. Uh, and then when you go out into the world, you can basically tell them what you're doing in real time. You can check in at the Austin Convention Center and say, "I'm at Oscon and looking at this awesome talk." And then all your friends can see what you're up to. And then we're going to take all of this data and, and reuse this data and spit it back out to you in useful ways. So when you're in an inf unfamiliar place and you want to go out and get dinner, you can say, hey, I want to go get Italian food tonight. And Foursquare will make a recommendation to you based on where you've been in the past, based on where your friends have been, and based to uh, what's just generally popular on Foursquare. And hopefully it's a, a really interesting, good, personalized recommendation. Cool. And one of the, I love the quote that you gave. Um, software is eating the world? Yeah, it's a great quote from uh, Ben Horowitz. He, he recently used that in The Economist. Basically, you know, more and more of what people do every day is being consumed by software and put in a database somewhere. If you look around the world, almost every startup, you can think of it as a, a particular piece of software eating a particular piece of the world. And really, Foursquare is all about the fact that, you know, location and where people are going and what they're doing is being turned into bits and bytes that we can manipulate in interesting ways. Cool. And so the, the topic of your of your talk today was about MongoDB and how you got mm -hmm. there. Can you just tell a little bit how you, how you did get there? Sure. So Foursquare was originally running on MySQL, and then we made a very small change to switch to Postgres, but that was that was a pretty minor change. But then as we were scaling up and passing, you know, a million users or two, it became, you know, very clear, and this, you know, wasn't that surprising, but it became clear that we needed to come up with a, a more scalable solution, something where we could partition our data onto lots of different computers rather than just having a single node that was storing the bulk of our data. So mainly we switched to MongoDB because it made doing that, you know, very, very simple and very straightforward, and we were able to make that transition with the uh, the least amount of, of pain possible. And it sounded like you guys had quite a bit of, you said within one year, a million to 10 million users? Yeah, something like that. I think the quote was that we had 3,400% growth in 2010. That's some, that's some pretty impressive growth. Uh, yeah, pretty good. And so now you're using Mongo on that side, and you're also using Hadoop for offline stuff? How are you using that? Yeah, we use Hadoop for, uh, for basically offline data analysis. So basically, anytime anything happens on Foursquare, we want to create a log entry for that. And then, you know, offline, we can do engineering analytics or business analytics to better understand, you know, how our users are using Foursquare so we can be smarter about, you know, what we build next or what we change. And so do, is there any way that you would ever link the two? Or was there also, was there any thought of using Hadoop for what you're using Mongo? And which came first? So Hadoop is really not at all designed for online data storage. We're using it for what it's designed for. Um, there is some talk that they might want to build more kind of Hadoop-like features into MongoDB. You know, if and when they did that, we would certainly kind of, you know, evaluate that. But it's, it's not really at the top of our roadmap. We're basically using the tools for what they were meant for, and they're doing a great job. And right now, you're running everything on EC2, correct? Yes. And so how long... How long do you do you foresee yourself on that indefinitely, or I, I would say not indefinitely, but probably you know at least for a little while. The flexibility that you get on EC2 in terms of you know being able to add and remove nodes you know super seamlessly and not having to have like people in house who really understand how to do things in data centers is extremely valuable. Uh, at some point, we'll probably end up having to move off purely because it's you know a cost thing. It'll ultimately be cheaper when we have thousands of machines to buy them ourselves rather than renting them at a high markup from Amazon. Also, we'd like to have a better data storage. Uh, I would cut off my left pinky if I could get solid state drives on, on Amazon, uh, but they don't offer that sort of thing today. Well, we'll turn this into as, as a request for, uh, <laughs> for a new feature. All right. I, I know they're working on it. It'll be interesting to see what they come out with in the next year or two. Excellent. Harry Heyman, thank you so much. Thank you.